The goal of an opportunity sizing exercise is to measure the potential financial impact of the innovation. Potential funders and collaborators will need to know what opportunity exists prior to committing time, money, and additional resources for further development. Ultimately, this is the beginning of establishing the commercial potential of an innovation and can be accomplished several ways depending on the primary customer. Step one, identify the paying customer. Life science innovations typically impact three different stakeholders patients, providers, and payers. Let's take a look at patients first. A common misconception about life science innovations is that the patient is the paying customer. Although true for certain innovations, such as 23andMe, Smile Direct Club, and Warby Parker, most are not direct to patient or direct to consumer and will be accessed by the patient through an intermediary or provider, such as a medical professional or hospital. So let's take a look at those. Providers can be individual healthcare providers, such as doctors, physician assistants, or nurse practitioners, or they can be clinics, hospitals, and health systems. Typically, individual healthcare providers are not paying customers. However, they play a critical role as key opinion leaders that can advocate for the adoption of an innovation. As such, clinics, hospitals, and health systems are commonly paying customers for life science innovations. Specifically, value analysis committees typically make purchase recommendations related to new technologies. Additional paying customers and very unique stakeholders in life science innovations are insurance companies, also referred to as payers. Although payers do not purchase innovations directly, they set a rate of reimbursement that healthcare providers will be paid for the use of certain innovations during procedures and services. Medical codes such as CPT, HCPCS, and DRG codes are a systematic way to establish and bill those rates. Knowing whether or not an innovation has an existing code is important for completing an opportunity sizing exercise. Whether the patient, provider, or insurance payer is your paying customer, the next step is to size the opportunity. Sizing the opportunity for direct-to-consumer innovations is fairly straightforward. Identify the total number of patients the innovation is intended for and multiply by an estimated purchase price. At this stage, the estimated purchase price can be based on the cost of manufacturing and overhead or benchmarking against similar products. A more in-depth analysis might include a total available market, serviceable available market, and target market. The total available market represents every possible patient that might purchase the innovation, while the serviceable available market represents a subset of that number that has a reasonable demand for purchasing the innovation. Therefore, the target market is the specific patient type that has demand and you are targeting for first adoption. For example, a mobile app intended to help diabetics monitor their daily activity and exercise might have a total available market of all diabetics, a serviceable available market of diabetics that own a smartphone, and a target market of all diabetics that own a smartphone and a gym membership. This is known as a top-down approach to sizing a market. It can also be done with a bottom-up approach by starting with the target market. The point of conducting a top-down or bottom-up analysis is to be specific and reasonable about the number of potential customers and available opportunity. It is unreasonable to think that an innovation will sell to 100% of the total available market. In fact, only 10 to 30% of the target market is more likely. Now let's look at what to do if the paying customer is a healthcare provider. Sizing the opportunity for providers can be more complicated than direct to patient. There are considerations for all stakeholders, patients, providers, and payers during the analysis. Begin by identifying the type of patient or procedure for which the innovation is intended to be used and multiply this number by an estimated purchase price 
using cost of production and overhead or benchmarking similar products to get a total available market. The paying customer, however, in this scenario is the provider, the clinic or the hospital. So it's important to identify the total number of providers treating those patients or providing those procedures. It is equally important when estimating a purchase price for those providers to understand how they may or may not be reimbursed by an insurance payer for the use of the innovation. Let's explore that a bit more. If the provider is reimbursed by a payer, the actual rate of reimbursement is an important consideration for estimating a purchase price. For example, if an existing CPT code reimburses a provider $150 for a service or procedure, an estimated purchase price should be set below that number. If a CPT code does not exist and the provider is not currently reimbursed, a risk mitigation strategy can be used. In this case, risk mitigation is estimating how much cost savings the use of an innovation will provide. This is especially important and easier to estimate if capitated payments exist. Capitated payments, opposed to fee for service, provide a lump sum payment to providers for a particular condition. For example, an insurer pays a provider a rate for all the care related to a total hip replacement. This model is intended to keep providers accountable for excessive costs and quality outcomes. If the use of an innovation mitigates the risk of exceeding the established capitated payment, an estimated amount of savings can be calculated for the provider. The same risk mitigation strategy can be used with standard reimbursement rates if capitated payments do not exist. Those are the basics of opportunity sizing. As you complete this exercise, it is important to keep these tips in mind. Be sure to find and cite supporting data for your claims. Use sources such as the Healthcare Cost and Utilization Project. Do your best to be as accurate as possible and be prepared to show your work. Remember, the most important concept at this stage is to identify the correct paying customer and provide a sense of scale to the opportunity. For more information, check out Fast Forward Medical Innovation.